Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to CSC 111, Intro to Computing, Python Edition. My name is Adam Goita and even before I start talking about what we're doing in this course, I want to at least introduce myself because you're going to be seeing me talk a lot over the next 10 weeks and you know, instead of me just being some talking head, it might be in uh, you know, beneficial to know who I am. So to even start, who am I? So I am a PhD student here at NC State, and before I was uh, here, I was an instructor at Cape Fear Community College and UNC Wilmington. Uh, even before then, uh, my research was in artificial face aging and using AI. Uh, specifically, you know, here's me once upon a time when Justin Bieber haircuts were popular and we said well oh you know the face it's just if I took a picture of a face it's just a two-dimensional graph and we can put points on that face a little XY coordinate oh well you know if we happen to do that for a lot of faces uh, and we build some demographical model for that we could say for example build a statistical model on what a 20 year old white male looks like or Caucasian uh, male looks like oh well if we happen to do that for 30 somethings 40 somethings 50 somethings 60 somethings 70 somethings 80 somethings etc etc and we expand to additional ethnicities and uh, genders oh well you know we can build statistical models and then make estimations based on well what the average does so when I was a 20-something Justin Bieber haircut wearing fool with a beard that hadn't fully come in yet, uh, well, we can say, well, based on the fact that you match this demographic, statistically, you're going to look like this when you're 80. Could be worse, right? Uh, but the entire idea there is just taking... Uh, artificial intelligence and mathematical models and applying them to a certain template. I also worked at a company known as Efficient Energy America, which was a smart thermostat for quick service restaurants. A quick service restaurant is a McDonald's, a Taco Bell, uh, Golden Corral, uh, you know, those types of restaurants where, you know, you, you just, you got a kitchen and a dining area. And the entire idea is we wanted to monitor your air conditioning units. You know, a kitchen that's about 90 degrees going on there. It's super hot and very stuffy. And so you can't just pump cold air all the time. If you're a cook, you wish, uh, yes, you do wish that they did pump cold air all the time. But unfortunately, owners don't do that. Uh, either way, the entire idea is, well, those HVAC units. Maybe there's a statistical model saying, we can say when that is starting to break down. And in fact, that is what we were working on. So uh, just some more fun little analytics. Now, where my research has taken me is, again, I was an instructor uh, at two colleges and I fell in love with uh, teaching and specifically in trying to help teach computer science education. And that's where I focus in on novel exercise types where we look at you know things that we've done in the past and even you know making predictions on what you're going to do next so for example you are currently watching a video on Moodle well based on the number of different activities that Moodle has to offer or this course has to offer what's the probability that you're going to then look at the slides oh well it's roughly speaking 12 percent but you know there's also the probability that you're going to quit after watching this video yep uh i'm not gonna judge i'm just saying that this is where my research has taken me and starting to do analysis on just how students build their practice regimen and I enjoy it. So now that you've learned who I am, now it's time to talk about this class. Again, welcome to CSC 111 Intro to Computing, where we will be learning Python edition. Uh, this course is obviously going to be on Moodle, so you can go on Moodle if you are not already on Moodle. 
and you can look at all the course material. Uh, one of the things that I highly encourage you all to do is take a look at Piazza. It is the message board forum that we're going to be using for this course. And specifically, when we start getting into uh, writing our code and debugging, you may run into a problem. One of the first things I recommend you do is check Piazza. Someone may have already had that same problem and myself or Trinity, our TA, may have already answered that problem. And same kind of concept. You may see someone else have a problem that you've already encountered and you can be like, oh, hey, you know, this is what you did. It's basically a Facebook for education. Either way, uh, the other little thing is, as you can imagine, this is an asynchronous class. So one of the things I'm doing is I have allocated three days to office hours. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday from 3 to 4.30 p.m. I'm just going to be available on Zoom. You can hop in uh, for however much time you need. You've run into a problem. You, you need some assistance in some way. You can hop in and I'll just I'll be available for you to kind of pick my brain. Uh, I also, if you can't meet any of those times, you can also reach out to me via my email address and we can schedule some time as well. So with that in mind, what is CSC 111? Yes, we are going to be learning about, where are you? We're going to be learning about Python, but as you can clearly see, it's not the only thing we're focusing in on. And more specifically, we are using Python. The reason why I call this Python edition is because what we are really learning is this idea of problem solving. Python is just a tool, not any different than a hammer, not any different than uh, a frying pan. It is just a tool to sort of get to the next stage of whatever your vision is. If I need to build a birdhouse, right? I need tools to do that. And you know, oh, well, there are a number of different tools I could work off of, but a hammer is a tool to do that. My frying pan, I have a vision for this wonderful culinary masterpiece that I'm going to do. I'm going to use risotto style cooking on grits, right? I need tools to do that. I don't even know if risotto style grits would work, but regardless, my point is, I have Python to do that in the computing world. And so in this class, what we're really focusing in on is this idea of using the computer and using Python to attack statistics or attack data and be able to then apply statistical models and data analytics to data to solve our problems in scientific research. So it's not as exciting as risotto style grits, but in my perspective, it's actually super fun. One of the things that I do want to focus in on, though, is that Python and programming is going to result in a lot of debugging. There are going to be times where you're banging your head on the keyboard and you're just frustrated and pissed off and Ah, why can't this be masterfully easy? Well, that's not how learning works, right? You don't always just magically become an expert at something. I'm not that good of a cook, but you guess what I've been doing during the pandemic? I've been practicing my cooking skills. The same kind of concept. What happens if you wanted to learn a musical instrument? Well, if you screw up, you have to kind of like figure out what you did wrong there. <clears throat> And so the same kind of concept will come in. That is where myself and Trinity will hopefully be helping you work on your debugging skills during this entire process. So with that in mind, like I said, again, this is the Python edition. And since you're learning about a new tool and it's a little more complex than a hammer, I do like to provide a little bit of background. It was built by Guido von Rusen uh, over Christmas, not this Christmas, but Christmases of past uh, because he looked at programming and was like you suck I'm gonna build something better and he did 
and it became popular and now it's used all over the place google uses it video games use it nasa uses it <clears throat> a number of different companies use python and it really as you can sort of see it made python simple it made it fun again and so the entire idea here is well you know this is what we'll be working off of now specifically especially with this xkcd comic there is a caveat to that python operates by tons of people out there in the community building all of these libraries for other people to use and the problem is that it got so popular that you have to go and download all of these libraries and install them and get them working before you can even work with python no no i'm not doing that with y'all uh so literally you think about things like jupiter spider numpy scipy pandas matplotlib all of these libraries that python uses and needs to use well <clears throat> instead of us going out and struggling to install all of them anaconda happens to just have a one quick here click this button download it and we'll install all of it for you work from and that's exactly what we're going to be using off of this course you're welcome to use other things if you'd like but we're going to be focusing primarily on uh, anaconda so at least kind of moving into how our course will operate as you can already sort of imagine lectures are going to be asynchronous meaning there is no meeting time that we are all pump uh, going into a zoom uh, and then you watch me lecture that's not gonna happen because you're gonna not have your camera on and you're gonna be like this no instead these videos are available to you to watch whenever you need to watch them one of the things i strongly encourage you to do is code along with me i will be throwing up code and writing code during these videos and i encourage you to pull up your anaconda environment and code with me uh, see what's going on that way if you make a mistake you can pause the video look fix it and sort of follow along and even play if you want to goof off and just see what else you you know can do with it then in the labs the labs are going to be synchronous and the way i like to think about this actually stems us uh, from uh working out right uh think about you want to run a mile or you want to run a 5k a 10k a marathon you want to run uh, a long distance well, how do you, you don't just go outside and start running a marathon unless you're one of those people, at which point, right? You don't just start running a marathon. You have to allocate time to focus in and just work on that and build up your endurance to start running. And the entire idea for the labs is that is what they, this is going to be. These are going to be hands-on times where you can just sit down and practice python and just build up your your repertoire and skill set of being proficient with python it is also going to be where you're uh, going to have your homeworks and then as you can always imagine that is also where your exams are going to be oh we're using big fancy exam words now so i guess it's time to talk about grading as i was just talking about obviously yes your midterm and your final exam do exist and they're 20 percent of your full grade and just to move work upward since i i did that uh you will have a project realistically it's not projects but project uh as a part of this class and it is going to be broken down into three parts realistically what this is is just this one project is going to encompass an entire workflow of data analytics and visualization uh, to spoil it for you you're basically going to be building a moving average or a function to build a moving average then incorporating that with some file io reading a text file to produce that visual uh, that uh moving average and then finally getting into a visualization taking that data taking that moving average 
and visualizing. Pretty cool. Homeworks, as you can imagine, are homeworks. They are checking to make sure that you understand the entire problem solving process and coding. And so, homework. Homework each week. Uh, lab exercises, again, it's making sure that you spend time actually practicing those skills and making sure that you have allocated time every week to make that mile run kind of perspective. We also then have lecture exercises. These are going to be multiple choice, short answer, fill in the blank style questions on Moodle each week just to make sure, do you understand the concepts? When we get into conditional statements, do you understand what the code is doing the entire time? When we get into loops, do you understand what the code is doing all the time? And then finally, we get into attendance. Now, this may be a little interesting because attendance, we're asynchronous. So how's that going to work? Quite literally, you're going to have 20 attendance exercises on typos. It's a website that I built uh, during my time here. But the entire idea is each week you have two of those that you have to do for attendance. They must be completed before the, the week is up. Uh, otherwise, it's not counted as attendance. You are going to be free to use that code wherever you want. In fact, think of it as like building a template that you can then rely on elsewhere. Oh, I've done this in the past. Let me do it again. So what are these exercises? Quite literally. Yes, typing exercises. Now, I feel like some of you may have pulled away as I wrote that. The way I want you to think about this is, this is no different than if you are trying to learn a musical instrument, uh, right? If you want to learn the piano, you have to learn how to play the scales. C, D, E, to H, or is H even on? I'm not a musician, as you can tell. But the entire idea is you have to become proficient with the instrument before you can move on to like writing your own piano scores, right? Another example of this is I have been teaching and training martial arts for 14 years. And, you know, martial arts, you do drilling and then you punch people and they punch you back. So if I only like show you a technique once, right, and you maybe practice it once, and then I tell you to go fight someone, right? You're going to get creamed because you have not had time to practice and refine that technique. So quite literally, guess what? This is an instrument that you have to become proficient with. Oh. And so let's fix that. And so there we are. And so the entire idea is to make sure that you are proficient with the keyboard. So the entire idea is that on the right hand side, or sorry, on the left hand side, you are going to be seeing an image of code. And your task is retype it on the right hand side. If you make a mistake or a typo, the entire idea is, well, you don't just magically get a zero and you fail and, you know, you, no reprieve. No, the entire idea is, well, time to uh, fix what you did wrong and revise it. Oh, I messed up on, when I was playing the piano. Well, I, I, I fail at being a musician for the rest of my life. No, you sit back, you do it again, you practice, you try and fix those little pieces. And so even though it's something pedantic, but... Something like single quotes, if the image was asking for double quotes, well, typos will just say, hey, this is where you made a mistake. Fix that mistake. If you come in and then fix those mistakes, all you then can do is make a, a repeated attempt. In this case, you can, excuse me, <laughs> in this case, you can uh, say submit and Congratulations, you get uh, a wonderful screen with stars letting you know you can download your code. You can uh, so download your code, do it again, or you can return home. 
Typos is going to have your t attendance exercises, but it's also going to have additional exercises that are not for a grade, but they are there available to you if you want to continue doing more practice. So again, I encourage you to do that as well. One thing to note is these wonderful stars here. Do nothing. They're not part of the grade. You don't need to get three stars to make sure you get a hundred. None of that matters. They're just there in case you want to, you know, refine your skill. If say, for example, you don't get this last star. Oh, well, you know, guess what? You can do it again and practice and get better and refine. And so, you know, some fun little things there. Generally speaking, uh, these exercises don't take 10 minutes. So, you know, yes, you'll most likely always get that star. Uh, they're roughly speaking about five to seven, um, but that's about the, the speed uh, for each one of those. Now, when we think about our homework, again, you're going to be having some quizzes on Moodle. And the entire idea to these programming assignments is typically we'll tell you, hey, your job is to build a function, and we'll talk about functions next week, build a function that does some task, and here's some ways you can check, also known as test cases. And guess what? Then you build it, you write that code, you name it something, and you upload it to Moodle, and we grade it, and you get a grade, and we move on and do that over and over and over again. So again, that's just kind of where we get into that. Now, with that being said, we are online. Do not cheat. I know that that sounds like I shouldn't have to say that, but I have literally caught one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In this case, eight assignments on Chegg. We are actively looking for these exercises on Chegg. And in this particular case, I had one fifth of the class get caught for cheating. I'm very serious about that. I will look at it. I'm very good at the computer. It's my research. We will find you and we will fail you. Now, the entire idea here though is you're not just getting a zero, you will get a negative 100 on uh, the assignment, again, that counts as two zeros. It's encouraging you not to do that. The entire idea is, again, if you look at these exercises, all of this practice, I'm trying to give you a number of different activities so that you are given enough time to refine your technical skills. It's, again, it's like the piano. I want to make sure that you know how to play the piano. And so I'm trying my best to give you every possible opportunity of learning, you know, spending time, uh, getting down the scales, uh, making sure that you understand music theory, having time to practice your scales. Uh, I don't really have an equivalent for, you know, do play some of uh, a particular song, uh, build your own song. You know, the entire idea is I want to have as much drilling practice for you as possible so that when you uh, need to now do this, you know, you're competent and you feel confident that I just know how to do hearts and souls, da 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 da, -da hearts, and, or something harder. I, again, I, I, my, my other skill set is punching people and Nobody likes it when I explain punching people. So, hearts and souls. Either way, welcome once again to CSC 111, and let's get coding.